I love Christmas light projects. From making them dance to music with an old pair of speakers to USB powered Christmas lights for a festive cubicle. But this time I'm going to show you how to make smartphone controlled Christmas lights. I know, it's about time. Okay, so what will. Oh, right, I should issue a warning before we continue. Okay, so you're going to be working with electricity and possibly very high voltages that could potentially harm you or even kill you. So please use every precaution to keep yourself safe. Before we jump into the big stuff, make sure you've seen my beginner's Raspberry Pi tutorial which shows you how to install Debian, which is now called Raspbian, on your Raspberry Pi. You can download it from the link below. It also shows you how you can remote into your Raspberry Pi from your computer. So once you have your Raspberry Pi set up and you've successfully remoted into it, you may now continue down the path of awesomeness. So let me quickly explain what it is that we're trying to do here. You see these pins on the Raspberry Pi? Well, they can act as input and output terminals that send and receive signals, similar to an Arduino. So we need to find a way to control these terminals. Enter WebIOPi. WebIOPi is a web application that lets you control the input and output pins on the Raspberry Pi. On their website, you can find instructions for how to install it, or you can just follow along as I do it. Open up a command prompt and SSH into your Raspberry Pi, as I showed you in the last tutorial. And let's install Python. Now, use the wget command to download WebIOPi from Google Code, and then extract it. CD into the WebIOPi directory and run the setup script. And that's it. Just type in this script and set the port to 8000 to run the server. After that, you can just pop open a web browser and type your Raspberry Pi's IP address, colon, and then the port number that we decided to use. Okay, very quickly, this is the schematic of the pins on the Raspberry Pi. The number 2 pin being at the very corner of the device. Notice how some of the pins have an in and out box beside them. This tells whether they are receiving inputs or sending outputs. You can click them to change their status. You can also click on a pin to turn it on or off. Let's do a simple little test to try this out. Using some wire, connect the number 6 ground pin to a breadboard, and then also connect the number 11 GPIO 17 pin to the breadboard as well. Then take a 240 ohm resistor and connect one end to the 11 wire and the other end to the positive side of an LED. Then take the ground pin and connect that to the negative side of the LED. Then on any browser that's connected to your network, pull up the web IOPI interface and set the 11 pin to out and then turn it on. You should see the LED toggle on. Touch the 11 pin again to toggle the LED off. That's a good small scale test, but what about larger stuff, like Christmas lights? Well, that's where a solid state relay comes into play. A solid state relay essentially turns a device on or off depending on whether it's been sent an electrical signal or not. And the type of solid state relay you get depends on how much voltage the device you're trying to control has. You can find out more about solid state relays and how to control them at the link below. I'm going to be using a Crydom D2W202, which is the same relay that I used in my music controlled Christmas lights project. What you want to do is take a pair of Christmas lights and cut and strip one of the two wires somewhere about halfway between the plug and the lights. Then using some extra wire or alligator clips, you want to connect the wire going towards the Christmas lights to the far right post of the solid state relay. Connect the wire going towards the plug to the second post from the right. Then you want to connect the third post from the right to pin 22 on the Raspberry Pi. And lastly, the furthest left hand post on the solid state relay connects to the ground pin 6 on the Raspberry Pi. Then for safety purposes, you may want to put a diode on this pin to prevent any power kickbacks. Set pin 22 to out and make sure it's off. Then making sure everything is connected properly and all of your safety precautions are in place, go ahead and plug in the lights. 
Accessing the web controls from your phone, tap pin 22 to enable it and to turn on the lights. Tapping it again should turn the lights off. And there you go, smartphone controlled Christmas lights. What you can do from here is solder everything together and get a nice little project case to fit everything into. Alright, for more tutorials, feel free to visit my website at tinkernut.com or my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash gigafied. That's it for this tutorial. Until next time, hack some fun into your weekend.